Welcome, Rudy, to the next episode of the Cannabis Review. I'm delighted to be joined in this episode by Ruth Fisher, who's the principal at Quanta. She's an economist with a passion for understanding how components of systems work together to create outcomes. How are you keeping today, Ruth? Oh, I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic. I've been looking forward to having a chat with you now since we announced this. Um, Can you maybe give everybody a quick little overview of how you came to set up Quanta and how you ended up touching on the cannabis industry? Um. So I'm an economist and uh, I spent a lot of time in, uh, I I started out doing uh, supporting expert testimony as to damages from infringement. And I was working on a lot of technology and especially biotech and healthcare industry uh, projects. Um, And I left the industry to start Quanta because I was very interested in the fact that when I was working with firms, um, the information that I got tended to come in very piecemeal from different companies. So I would go in and need to do certain analyses and I would say, okay, in order to understand the environment here, I need this information and this information and this information. And what happened invariably is the companies would say, okay, for this piece of information, talk to this guy. And for this information, talk to this guy. And for that information, talk to that guy. And I would put everything together and get a much more comprehensive and to me more uh, 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 just a better understanding of what was going on in the company. Um, And I figured that uh, if I started my own company, uh, I could help companies kind of piece together this information, give them a, a more complete vision of what was going on in their environment and help them more strategically uh, advance their uh, their projects or products or whatever it is that they were offering. So that's kind of how Quanta came to be. Um, I came to cannabis in about 2015 because my brother was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Um, and he was having a very difficult time um, alleviating his his neuropathic induced uh, his neuropathic pain uh, from cannabis. And one of his doctors at some point said, "You know, I think you might be able to benefit from cannabis, but I can't give you any guidance." So he's kind of thrown out there. He was he was excited to finally have something new to try because he would he had tried everything. Um, So he started using cannabis and um, at some point he realized that he was getting some effects, but if he knew what he was doing, he would probably be getting better effects. So given my background in in healthcare and and market research and understanding how to gather information and put it together in a helpful uh, way, he turned to me and said, you know, I'm using cannabis. I'm getting some results. I think I could get better results if I knew what I was doing. So can you help me figure this out? So at that point, I came to cannabis and I literally had zero understanding of the plant, the product, how it worked, anything. Um, it was it was a very uh, interesting experience for me. I jumped in. I said, I'm just going to try and figure this out. Uh, I just started reading everything. It's it's a very, perhaps the most complex industry I've ever been involved with. Um, it took me a long time to finally kind of understand what was going on. And, and it was very interesting to me because there's so much information out there. And I know that I, I talk about this regularly and everyone seems to have the same problem is People who are new to cannabis, they start trying to find information and it's really hard to understand what's going on and, and what to believe. There's, there's good information, there's misinformation, there's disinformation, it, there's kind of everything out there. Um, and it took me a while and I think perhaps what helped me most to understand the information in cannabis and in the industry is that you have a lot of different people who are in the industry and they're providing information and they're providing products and services and advice and everything from their particular perspective. So you have have the traditional healthcare industry and the traditional healthcare industry, they're very skeptical. In the early literature, everyone was very anti-cannabis and everything is focusing on the dangers of cannabis. And then only more recently are they focusing on doing research on how cannabis actually works. Then you have kind of the traditional legacy people and they're talking about whole plant cannabis and they're providing a really, a lot of really good information on the plant and whole plant products, which are diametrically opposed to the isolate model that the traditional healthcare industry are presenting. 
Uh, you have a lot of casual users who uh, some of them have good information, some don't. You have a lot of naysayers out there who are trying to kind of torpedo cannabis in any way they can. So for me, one of the biggest lessons I've learned in the industry is to try and figure out what perspective, what's the background of that person who's providing the information. And that will help you kind of figure out what context to put that information in. So that, that was definitely very helpful for me. Um, but so once I started understanding how cannabis was working and I was, I was giving the information to my brother and, and he was using it and lo and behold, it was working. And that was just really fantastic. And we decided to um, try and, and kind of put together a more systematic view of cannabis to help other people. Um, we started developing a technology. It didn't end up kind of going very far. Um, but um, so after that, I was continuing on and became very passionate about education uh, and, and education and promoting medical cannabis and promoting access to people who, uh, who've been kind of not able to be served well by the traditional community, which there are a lot of those in cannabis, unfortunately. But at the same time, as an economist and as someone very interested in market dynamics and technologies, I've also been looking at the industry and following its path of evolution. And in particular, it's a highly regulated industry and how are the, the regulations shaping the way that the industry is evolving in the way that firms are supplying products, which products are they supplying? Uh, what are the prices? Um, um, what type of competition is out there. Um, and I've also been really, really fascinated by all the different technologies in cannabis and kind of which ones are emerging. And um, so that's kind of where I am right now. Yeah, the cannabis industry seems to be one of the industries that everybody has their own personal point of view. And I think a highly accomplished people like yourself, especially in, in the economist side of things, are paramount to this industry actually getting some validity and being able to cut through, shall we say, the bullshit of a lot of the stuff that you hear in the cannabis industry around. So it, it's an absolute pleasure to talk to you. I'm going to move on to the first topic, which is cannabis emulsion technology. Can you maybe give everybody a little overview of your recent uh, publications on this technology and what it is that you found? Sure. So um, I, I was looking, reading about how uh, beverages are now perhaps one of the fastest growing categories, product types in cannabis. And, and, I, and I thought that was very interesting because all of a sudden beverages are kind of the it product. And I'm like, well, beverages have been out there before, so why now are they just being uh, becoming successful? And so I started researching in that, and it turns out that what's really important in beverages are the emulsion technologies. And again, I was kind of puzzled because I know emulsion technologies are nothing new. So I, I kind of did some research there and I discovered that emulsion technologies in general first started becoming commercially available in the early 1900s. And they were being uh, used primarily in the food industry, but in other industries as well. So that's that's been a hundred years now. So you know why are our cannabis beverages only now new? So after the the traditional emulsion technologies in around the 60s, um, 50s, 60s, 70s, you had micro emulsion technologies, and those were an improvement and enhancement on on the earlier stuff. Um, and those, those uh, did allow for very small particle sizes. And again, well, now that's the 60s. It's still, you know, 60 years. So why is it new? Well, then you have the nano uh, emulsion technologies. And those improved upon the micro emulsion technologies. But those were the late 90s. So again, 20 years they've been around. And it, it, I just I kept digging and it, it was more and more of a mystery. And so um, it, it took some, I went into the patent database and I was looking at the timing of the patents to see when the technology started first becoming available. And so you, you had the nano, nanotech uh, patents in the late 90s started coming around. Um, and I was very baffled and um, it wasn't until I was reading some um, some papers by Industrial Sono, Sono Mechanics, I believe is the company. Um, and everything became clear then 
And what happened was, is you had early uh, technologies. What, so, so an emulsion is basically, so cannabis is, is soluble in oil, not water. So if you create a beverage, what you're doing is you're taking a cannabis extract, which is an oil-based product, and mixing in a water-based beverage. And so what happens is, is the cannabis extract, the oil stuff was globbing in the beverage and it was kind of sticking to the can. And so that was really problematic. It wasn't mixing up. And if you take, you know, it didn't taste very good. The cannabis extract is very bitter. Um, and the, there's a big problem with it because it's not homogeneous in the can. If you have say a 10 milligram uh, can of uh, a, a beverage and you drink half the can, you're not getting half the dose. And in cannabis, this is a big deal uh, where you need to be able to dose kind of in a very predictable way. And so um, in a classic emulsion technology, uh, the problem is, as I said, so the oil's globbing in the water. And generally what you want to do is you want to break up the oil into smaller pieces so it mixes more homogeneously um, in, in the water and they couldn't get that in cannabis. And while what you can do is you can shake the can very vigorously and then it kind of, you know, you get a nice emulsion, but then it very quickly separates again. So it wasn't stable. And so what a good emulsion technology will do, it will do two things. It will break the cannabis globs into very, very small particles but then importantly, very importantly, it will coat each of the uh, each of the molecules or the particles rather in a substance called a surfactant or an emulsifier. And so by coating the small particles, then you keep them from recoalescing or re-separating out again. And so this is these two factors being able to create small molecule sizes and also coat them to keep them separate is the challenge of the technology. And the microemulsion technologies and the, na the nanotech uh, technologies, both were enabling this, but not very greatly. So the earlier technologies, what happens is they would put the surfactant into the, the cannabis and the beverage, and it would cause the molecules to break up, but you needed a whole lot of surfactant to do this. And you needed more surfactant than the cannabis extract concentrate in there, which and the and the 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 uh, surfactants don't taste very good, and so it just didn't work. It wasn't stable. Um, you could get stability, but it just it didn't taste good. Um, and it was only and this is kind of the big thing, and this is a long winded way of getting there. But the really big thing is only very recently have they been able to have these technologies that are forcing rather than just kind of relying on the chemical breakdown of the particles into small sizes. They're using a technology to force um, the the breakup of the cannabis oil into very small particle sizes. And by using the technology to force the breakup, they can now use much, much less surfactant on there. And so now you have these very, very small particle sizes um, and much lower amounts of surfactants. And um, so the two now work together and it's creating homogeneous beverages that are translucent. So they don't look gloppy. Um, it's mixing up nicely and you're getting, um, very importantly in cannabis, you're getting not only better dosing, so you can drink half the can and get half the contents, but also you're getting improved bioavailability. And traditionally in cannabis, if you use, uh, if you ingest cannabis, uh, orally, you get a really, really low bioavailability on the order of say 5%, um, but with the, these new technologies, you're by increasing, by decreasing the particle size, you're getting, it's, it's passing through your system. It's not getting destroyed in the stomach by the acids and it's getting absorbed by your intestines in, uh, much better. So um, it's, these technologies have only been around for the last couple of years and it's creating uh, whole new areas for um, beverages and other forms of edible uh, cannabis products, which I think is just gonna cause explosive growth in the future.
Yeah, being able to feel the results quicker and faster, I think, is the core objective of a lot of these brands. And it's no different that the most popular brand that we know of is canned drinks and they're using sources technology. And I think it seems to be that these brands that create this emulsion technology are actually going to be some of the main winners when it comes to the whole entire industry. Uh, yeah, I there. It appeals to both casual users, the whole like cocktail crowd who want to use cannabis like they use, you know, alcoholic beverages, but also by the whole medicinal group who wants a, you know, rapid rate of onset, wants to be able to do very clean dosing um, and have very, you know, palatable products. Um, before we finish up, what are the things you're looking forward to seeing in the industry happen over the next 12 to 24 months? Do you think federal legalization is going to end up rocket boosting the industry and the technology into the next level? I, I was just reading this morning how um, they're talking about uh, legalization by the end of the year. Um, I don't know that it's going to happen that quickly. I think that there's so much politics and there's so many, so many groups out there who have such a strong interest against cannabis legalization. Um, so I don't want to make any predictions, but I think it's going to take longer than, uh, people hope. Um, I also want to note, there's a lot of talk about how the industry is going to consolidate very quickly. Um, and this is another area that I've been looking at. And I worry about competition. I think that we need we need all the little guys out there. We need the craft cannabis and we need all the small businesses to promote variety because variety in cannabis is so important for so many reasons. Um, and all the regulations I see have been very problematic in that they create they create a very difficult environment for small businesses to thrive. So I hope the legislation helps protect small businesses and creates a viable environment for them. Um, I also, the other thing I really worry about is that um, recreational or adult use cannabis is going to swamp medical and it's going to squeeze it out. And I think that, that when federal legalization comes, they really need to have a very clear carve out to promote and maintain um products and services geared specifically towards medical cannabis patients. Uh, and, and so those are, I don't know where regulations are going. I don't know when it's going to come. I think it's going to come later than people think. I think it's going to take longer for the industry to settle than people think. Um, and what I really, really hope for is protections for small businesses and medical cannabis. Yeah, it's been highly informative chatting to you. I could wish the episodes were 30 minutes long because there's so much more we could touch on, but I couldn't agree with you more. I think that the, the entrepreneurs with a strong brand and, a, and an exact target consumer, as opposed to a scattergun blanket approach, are going to be the ones that are hopefully around for the long term. You know, what, what I think could really do it for them is by enabling direct-to-consumer uh, marketing. And I've been reading also about the wine industry and the wine industry, they do direct to marketing sales. And that's very important to, you know, to, to enable small wineries. And I think that they really need to do that. And they've explicitly prohibited it, at least here in California, but I think they really need to enable it. And that, that would really, really help. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, as I said to you, I'd love to talk even further with you, but the episodes are very short and brief to the point. Hopefully we can touch base again in a couple of months and we might have some more information to be able to chat on. For anybody who hasn't checked out quanta.com, I highly recommend it. If you're not following our LinkedIn with Ruth on LinkedIn, again, you're missing out on some top tier knowledge and data. So Ruth, thank you very much for taking your time to do this. It's been very much appreciated. Thank you very much for having me and, and thank you for promoting good cannabis. Thank you, Ruth. Have a great day and chat to everybody on the next episode.